This is your exclusive negotiating window. Bryce is still property of the Nats. Let's talk turkey. And he squeezed the Nats to their very breaking point. And they had to give him a good faith big offer because if that was their window before he got to the bidding war, they had to blow it up. He squeezed him to their very last cent and then said, thanks, but I think we'll test the waters. Why? Because now he's got a starting point. Now he goes to the Giants. He goes to the Phillies. He goes to the Cardinals. He goes to the Yankees and says, well, the Nats are willing to give him 10 years at 350. So what are you willing to do? That's the starting point. It's the most brilliant negotiating ploy possible. Get the team with the exclusive window to show their hand, and now you have a hand to play. You tell the Yankees, you know, look, he takes ground balls at first base every day. You'd like to be your first baseman? Great. He can be your first baseman. Hey, he loves Mickey Mantle. You saw him. He cut off his sideburns and his goatee for that series against the Yankees. Remember that? Yeah, he would love to be a Yankee. But the starting point is 10 years, 350, because that's what we got from the Nationals. It's brilliant. And so are you willing to go more than 10 years, 350? Again, that is just a number we're throwing out there because apparently it was between 300 and $400 million if you kind of read the tea leaves. But let's just say for hypothetical sake, it's 10 years of 350. Now he goes to all of those teams and say, can you match this? No? Okay, we'll go back to Washington. Because I'll tell you this. Bryce Harper, I don't think he's given a hometown discount to the Nationals. And I think he's going to the highest bidder. I mean, look, if if a team out of nowhere gave Bryce Harper 375 and the Yankees were at 365 and he really wanted to be a Yankee, okay. But I got a hard time believing he's not going to the highest bidder. 